On the last weekend of April, I flew out to Los Angeles for Hillsong's 2018 Color Conference. The Women's Conference was founded back in 1997, and to this day, it is still led by Hillsong Senior Pastor Bobby Houston. Oh my gosh! Uh, I just had something in my heart for Bobby. It's phenomenal what God's done. It was like next year is a God shift. And you're going to find not just gathering women together for great occasions and mobilizing them, but you're going to find many of the women that you've sown into end up in places of high influence. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on us because he has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. This weekend, may we grow in the love and the clarity and the truth of who you are. Because honestly, if we achieve that, if you go away in 24 hours time and your heart is enlarged, your heart is rich, richer, your heart is healed, it is stronger, then by the grace of God, we've done our job. You are a woman and you can do whatever you want. When? Mm -hmm. There's a condition. Just being a woman isn't enough. You can do whatever you want. You can achieve remarkable things in your lifetime. When this scripture word has a condition, when we wrap ourselves in His strength and His might and His power, there's a difference. Okay, there is a very real difference. Here. This is my prevailing thought to you tonight as we open conference. My prevailing thought is that this God waits. He waits with breath and grace. He waits in our future with the breath of God, the, the breath of God. He waits with breath and grace for each and every one of us. You can't set sail into new horizons, a new adventure. You can't say there is more. You can't cut new kingdom territory without friction of the sea and tension and opposition and the devil coming out and all his glory. Good sailors trust their compass even in the darkness. They trust this, amen? Even in the darkness, see your word, the word in the darkness, when you can't see, this is your compass. This word needs to become your BFF this year in greater dimension, hallelujah. I'll pray.
tower of rescue where none can reach me. My secret strength and shield around me. You are salvation's ray of brightness shining on a hillside. Always the champion of my cause. Amen. Always. The enemy fundamentally wants you to believe that there is something wrong with you. And most of us at some time have thought there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. And that's where the enemy wins because he can cripple and paralyze and minimize the potential that God's put on the inside of you for you to flourish and be the woman of God that he's called you to be so that you would do what God's called you to do. Shame is from the pit of hell. It is not from God ever, 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 ever. And we as women of God need to exercise some wisdom because before the fall, there was no shame. Shame is a consequence of the fall, so we don't want to be aligned with our culture that shames people, that condemns people, that is full of telling people you're not enough and you're not good enough and you didn't vote like me, you don't look like me and you don't do this like me, therefore I'm going to shame you. He understood the power of getting us to question the character and the nature of God and the goodness of God. So he came with the first question we see in the Bible, the first question ever in Scripture, which is the question that is on the table for us in 2018. It hasn't changed. It is the question that is on the table for every generation of the church without exception. The enemy comes into the garden and he asks this question, did God really say did, did God really say scripture is inerrant? Did God really say Jesus is the only way to God? Did God really say there's a literal hell? Did God really say you really shouldn't have sex outside of marriage between one man and one woman? Did God really say that in 2018? When you undermine the power of the word of God in your own mind, when you think it doesn't really say what it says, then it has no transformation, transformational power in your life. And then we dilute it so the enemy thinks, if I can just get them to believe it's not really true, that God didn't really mean what he said he meant, then I am going to render that word ineffective through their traditions and their great mindset so that it doesn't do what I have purpose for it to do. So you look at me today by God's grace, free and delivered, and yet I have, many of you have seen my documents that say unnamed, unwanted, unqualified. But see, I understood the power of this word, which is the truth of the word of God, to supersede the facts of my circumstances. And that fact and the truth of God's word set me free. If you abide in my word, then, not if you abide on social media, or if you abide in the latest pop psychology, or if you abide in the latest cultural trends, if you abide in my word, then you will know the truth. And guess what it will do? It will set you free. And the enemy does not want you to be free. So he doesn't want you to abide in the truth. The other thing the devil gets people to do, you try to paralyze you, get you to withdraw, try to get you angry with God. Or the other thing is he'll get you to stop beating up on yourself. Start living for a regret. If only I hadn't done that, if only I didn't go down this, if only, if only. You know what, God can turn scars, regrets, pain into power.
moment and it was hilarity and ridiculous and then spiritual and beautiful and you know what that's the nature of life and the nature of doing it together and so it's awesome and you know so again on behalf of Brian and um, our Hillsong Church thank you for coming for making the investment for being here for bringing people For more on the Color Conference and my trip to LA, check out my blog, fearlesseyesproductions.com.